Greetings, Taku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Liar Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm here to bring you all yet again another Vikings episode review right here on Otaku Assemble Weekly. And as always, I'm here to bring you the latest in this week's Vikings episode review. And this is my review of Season 1, Episode 8, entitled Sacrifice. Now, general thoughts on this week's episode. By far, I think the most informative episode of the season. Um, just in regards to Vikings culture, in regards to Norse mythology, their religious beliefs, their religious practices, and that's mainly because that was the catalyst for this episode. That was the main for, uh, focus, was the pilgrimage to, I believe, how did they pronounce it? It was, uh, you... Upsala, yeah, Upsala, to their pilgrimage there, to uh, the festival, um, and then of course the sacrifices, which was uh, the main subject of this episode. So I think taking all those things into consideration, this, I, I think more so than any other episode, this one was very informative. Um, and there, there were things, uh, there were things in this episode that I didn't even know about, as far as. Uh, Viking religious practices and some of the uh, the Norse rituals. There were a few things I, I I never even knew of. So I thought all of that was um, very done very well. Now a couple of things I want to talk about in this episode, and this won't be a I mean yeah a couple of things I want to talk about from this episode, and uh, and this won't be a long review because um, I, I, just a, just a couple of things I just want to comment on. Uh, first off, out the bat, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, Ethelston. While I was disappointed in the fact that this was not the episode that... Well, I can't even say that actually. Because the more I think about it, the more I'm thinking that maybe this was that, that event where Ethelston did have to make a choice. Now, any of you all who've been following up and keeping up with my Vikings episode reviews, you'll remember from one of my previous reviews, I had, you know, a nice long discussion about Ethelstan and about him starting to question his faith and that there was going to come up a point in time when he was going to have to choose and he was actually going to have to come to terms with um, his questioning of his faith, that 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 internal conflict was going to have to come to a head at some point in time. Now, at first glance, because I just got done watching the episode, I was disappointed in the manner in which that kind of played out in this episode. But now that I think about it more, maybe this was the event in which Ethelstan had to question and him deciding to keep his faith rather than adopt another one. But then again, I'm not convinced. And the reason why I say that is because the the way Ethelstan went about it, I thought was um, somewhat cowardly that, you, you know, he kept, he kept his cross on him the entire time, yet every time he was questioned by someone, he lied. And then when he was finally faced face to face with one of the uh, with one of the priest and when he learned that he was going to be sacrificed he fled you know he if if Ethelstan really did adopt the the Norse faith then he would have accepted the fact that he was to be sacrificed but he didn't however it's not as if he went there with the full affirmation of, yes, you know, I am a Christian and I do still keep my faith and this is that and the other. So th that, that's, why I, that's why I'm thinking that this isn't the event that's, that's going to really, uh, really challenge Athelstan. I don't think this was it. Now, I think that this does, I, I think that this might be the uh, the linchpin that does set off said challenge that I'm talking about because now Ethelstan has blood on his hands. Now he feels responsible for the death of someone who had to take his place because he would not 
own up to his place in the ritual. Now that could potentially lead to the challenge that I'm talking about, but we didn't get it in this episode. And like I said, I was a tad bit disappointed because I thought we, that we would. Um, and in all honesty, I don't, I don't know what else could happen um, either at the either in in the season finale next week or in uh, season two that could bring that along and I don't know how long it'll be until that happens. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I want to see Ethelston go because when I saw the preview for this week's episode last week, I was actually like, oh my God, Like, why would they kill him off so soon? So I'm not trying to see Ethelston go, but at the same time, I am trying to see Ethelston, uh, I'm trying to see his character arc reach its peak and I don't know how soon that'll be. So, um, now I want to mention Ragnar. Um, I thought it did make sense how he will, you know, his reaction to uh, Ligatha's miscarriage in last week's episode. The way in which Ragnar is kind of dealing with it, I think, does make sense. Um, however, I am starting to suspect that. Ragnar's desire to have another son despite the physical abilities of his wife may lead him to infidelity I, and I, I, they hint at it in this week's episode and I think they also hint at it in the preview for next week's episode but I do I, I can sort of see that happening but I thought it was uh, I thought it was a very good uh, a good move on his part to align himself with uh, with King Horik, who I can't re I don't remember the actor's name offhand. But when I saw him pop up in this, I'm like, God damn, man, he's in everything. Because I think he's gonna be the main villain in uh, the upcoming season of Sons of Anarchy. Because he. He appeared towards the end of the la of the previous season, so I think he's going to be the main villain in uh, or, or the main antagonist in the upcoming season. And now he's playing a role in this. I'm like, God damn, man, you are in everything. Anyway, but I like that actor. He's actually uh, pretty damn good. And I kind of feel bad that I don't remember his uh, his name offhand. But anywho, but I thought that was a uh, very smart. Um, on Ragnar's part and it sets up for some of Ragnar's future campaigns west that you know if we you know next time episode or season when season two starts or whatnot when we see Ragnar you know sailing with a you know what 10 12 ships we know where those ships are coming from so I like that foreshadowing nice foreshadowing um I will say that if I'm right about my uh, my theory about where Ragnar's story is going to go, um, especially in terms of him and his family, then you do uh, you do got to feel for Ligatha, and uh, and I'm not sure how that relationship will play out if, in fact, Ragnar's story does take that turn. I'm I'm not sure how that's going to. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure how that's supposed to uh, get resolved. Um, don't know. And my final thoughts on this week's episode is going to be... I just want to make a brief comment about Rolo and Siggy. Um, and how... Siggy's conversation with Rolo is reinforcing some of my comments that I've made in previous reviews about her character. And once again, she is a character of questionable morals, questionable intentions. I don't think that she can really be trusted. And I'm curious as to if Rolo will kind of fall within the, uh, fall under the same, fall in the same position that Haroldson found himself with Siggy too, because I stand by what I said, even though we know Haroldson was compelled by paranoia and fear and so many other things, I think Siggy did have um, 
I think she did have a hand to play in his downfall, um, whether it was just through uh, influence, bad, bad advice, manipulation, whatever you want to call it. I think she did have a hand in there somewhere. And I'm wondering if Roto will be, um, if Roto will fall under that that same vulnerability. Now, I don't think he will, just because I think Roto's just too damn stubborn. But he is simple, and 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 he's not as clever as Ragnar, and I'm pretty damn positive he's not as clever as Siggy. So we'll just see what happens with that. Anywho. But that's going to do it for this week's Vikings episode review. I want to thank you all for joining me again this week. And in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this week's episode, as well as some of your thoughts, predictions, and theories for next week's season finale. And with that being said, this has been Larry Williams, OAW Commander-in-Chief, signing off. And until next time, peace.